Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you the ins and outs of configuration and dependency injection in a Blazor application. Dependency injection, or DI, is the system by which instantiated objects are passed into pages and other services. The level of instantiation is defined elsewhere. But by the time an object is injected, it's already instantiated according to how it was defined in, you guessed it, the configuration. Today I'm going to show you how to add values to a configuration file and read them in a Blazor server application, a Blazor WebAssembly application also, and the ASP.NET Core web application that hosts a Blazor WebAssembly application. And along the way we'll learn how DI works and you'll be a better developer when we're done. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. Blazor Train! All right, let's talk config and dependency injection. Whoa, whoa. Now, this is a Blazor server application. Later, I'm going to be creating a Blazor WebAssembly application, but we'll start with a server. Now, Blazor server application is an ASP.NET Core web application. And all ASP.NET Core web applications with the uh, template in Visual Studio come with configuration baked in. So startup is a good place to start. And if you just take a look here, I put in some comments. Uh, the template comes with uh, the startup constructor that passes, or that is passed, an I configuration, so that you have access to this configuration stuff. Now, this is just by default in Blazor Server, and in fact, any ASP.NET Core web application. So, just right out of the gate, we get access to configuration in Blazor Server. Now down here, I have said this before, when you're adding services in configure services, you can add them as singleton like we do the weather forecast service. And that's one instance that's shared with all users on a Blazor Server app, just for Blazor Server, Blazor WebAssembly, different thing. Right, we don't have multiple users, we have one user. And then add scoped is another way that you can add a service. And there, there's one instance per user. So every user gets their own instance. And then add transient is scoped to the life of the page that is hosting it. So there you go. I just wanted to start there. Let's look at app settings JSON, shall we? App settings JSON comes with the server, and there's just some JSON stuff in here. And these are just essentially properties the you know uh, values that you can add keyed values so we're gonna add one here right after allowed hosts and it's called config message it's just a message from the config file just so that we have something that we can show that we've read oh here comes the tip and the tip is with Blazor Server, feel free to add secrets right here because you're on the server, no client will ever see them. So you can put connection strings, you can put passwords, you can put keys to services all day long, no problem. Not so in a Blazor WebAssembly application, right? You don't want to do that because the app settings is actually going to go to the client. There's different ways to do it, and I'll show you just coming up. But for now, understand that with Blazor Server, in uh, App Settings JSON, you can put whatever you want there. All right, now, how do we read it? It's actually pretty easy. Let's go to our index page, index razor, and I'm just going to remove this and put in a new index razor. So here's how it works. Now the squiggles I'll explain in a second. But we're injecting that I configuration into the page. And I'm just going to use the razor syntax to pull out configuration and then in square brackets, config message, which is the name of that value. Now the squiggles are there because we don't have the namespace for the I configuration qualified. So I'll just go over to imports and I'll add it there. Now here's the thing about imports, if I haven't mentioned it before, or even if I have, it doesn't matter, I'll mention it again. 
So the using statements that you have in imports underscore imports razor uh, only affect code that's in code blocks in pages, right? It doesn't affect any CS files that you have, any C sharp files. So for that, you have for those files, you have to use your own, put your own using statements in there. Okay. So now we should be able to read that config message from the config file right on the index page. And when we run it, we should see something like this. And there it is from the config file right there in plain English. All right. So that's just getting us started. What if we want to access the configuration in a class? you know, in a service or something like that. Well, let's actually add it to weather forecast service. So all we have to do is create a constructor that passes iConfiguration and we're just going to need to use the our using statement here because remember what I told you about imports pass that I configuration and then you have a class level variable called configuration and now we can use that so it's already in the pipeline we didn't have to set it up we didn't have to instantiate it the instantiation gets figured out in services and it's all right there so here we go I'll just put a breakpoint on this next line so that we can inspect message when we had that weather forecast page. And there it is from the config file. So the moral of the story is you can inject configuration in any other service into any class simply by adding it to the constructor. Easy peasy. All right, now let's add a Blazor WebAssembly project to the solution. And I'll call this config Blazor Wasm. And we have to do this little dance right here I've told you about before. Here's Blazor WebAssembly. We're going to make it ASP.NET Core hosted because I also want to show you how configuration works on the server side of a core ASP.NET Core hosted Blazor WebAssembly application. All right, there it is. So we will close up our server side app and I'll make the client side app the startup project. Well, config Blazor Wasm server. Remember, this is the ASP.NET Core web application that is going to host the WebAssembly application, config Blazor Wasm client. All right. So let's look at app settings.json on the server end of this and see if we can pull something up there. So I'm just going to add config message to that. And let's go to our weather forecast controller right here and see if we can't do the same thing on this side that we could do in the Blazor server application. All right, so we've changed the weather forecast controller now to pass in addition to the logger and I configuration, which we've specified there. And now when we get we're going to see if we can read from the configuration. Now this is an ASP.NET API controller, right? This is different from the weather service that's built into the Blazor server application. But it, it's the same thing. It's a class that is running on the server side. So I'll click on fetch data and it stops and here's our message and it says from the config file. All right, good. That's the server side. Now, how do we add configuration to the client, to the Blazor WASM app? All right, so what you're going to do is find the web root 
and right click on it and add a new item. Search for app settings and you'll find it right there, app settings file and it should come up app settings JSON, okay? But it's very important that you add it to the web root. And this is what I was saying before is that configuration files in the client side are going to be in the web root. They're going to be in the browser. All right. So you definitely do not want to put secrets here. So let's do this. Let's add our config message that now says from the client config file and just a reminder, you do not want to put any sensitive data here. No passwords, certainly no connection strings. Let's just get rid of that. All right, so how are we going to read this? Well, let's go to Pages, Index, and let's see if we can't just use the same code that we used in the Blazor server application on the client. All right, now we're going to get those same squiggles again, so that means our imports has to include that using statement right there. But uh, so far, everything looks pretty good. Let's run it and see what happens. Show sure enough, that works. Hello from the client config file. That is being read uh, in the browser, right, from app settings JSON that is actually loaded into the browser. Okay, I can't stress enough two things. One, make sure you put it in the web roof, not in any other place. And two, don't put any secrets in here. Okay? All right, now let's create a service that we're going to call in the client that is going to call out to the server or maybe do some other things. It's very typical if you're going to have APIs that you create a service that wraps all the calls to those APIs but we're not going to do that yet that's for another day I'm going to to the client add a folder I'm going to call it services to that services folder I'm going to add a class called my service I don't know it just came to me and let's uh, replace that with some usable code here now I'm going to read the configuration in the service by using dependency injection and yes I've got my using statement up there for Microsoft extensions configuration and all I did was I created a constructor that passes an I configuration and I set that value and now anytime that my code calls get special message it's going to return that config message and also add the current time. All right, so now I'm going to go to the program CS file and we need to add that service. And just like we would do this in the startup on the server side, program is where we do it in a Blazor WASM app. So here we're going to do builder.services.addscoped my service. Now I have to have that namespace qualified. Okay, and now you can see this is scoped, actually scoped singleton, doesn't matter, it's the same on the client side. But we've basically got this thing called my service, which is put into the DI system, and now I can inject it anywhere I want. So let's go back to the index page, and we will swap this out with something that calls the service. All right, here's my service, and uh, now I'm going to need to add either put a using statement here or add services to that imports there it is config blazor wasm client services so I have access to that and here we go I'm injecting my service into the page and then I'm calling get a special message when I run it There it is now. Now you can see the timestamp, 259.46. So I'm going to refresh this, and now you can see the time is updated.
Let's talk about some other things that you would want to do. What if this is just for reading values from a config file, you know, single strings. But what if you want to read an entire class? What if you want to read something that is a little more complex in its shape? All right, so let's close up all these and go back to the server because I want to start, I want to put a breakpoint in the uninitialized. And as of right now, we can't do that yet uh, in Blazor WebAssembly. So I'll close all these guys and let's go to the app settings file again. App settings, JSON. And right here, we're going to add, you know, some more complex data. We have a section called My App Settings, and there's two values here, maximum number of users and favorite color. Now, it would be really cool if I could just, you know, pull up index here and look at this, My App Settings, and see, you know, a two-string representation of that, and maybe, you know, we could even go so far as to have a code section, right? Wouldn't that be cool? Let's put a breakpoint here and see what we got. And my settings is null. You can see right there. All right, just to be sure, let's go back and grab this config message. Make sure it isn't anything in the implementation that we did wrong. You know, let's see if config message comes back. Sure enough, that does. So there's some difference between a, a message and something that has messages in it, or you could think of my app settings as a class. In fact, that's exactly what we have to do. We have to create a class and then map those things in my settings to it. So let's do that right now. Here we go. So I've got a class called My App Settings. It doesn't have to be called My App Settings. I'm going to press F2 here, and maybe we'll call it My App Settings class. It doesn't matter what you call it. This is what matters right here. So instead of configuration and then square brackets a value, you're going to call get section, and then pass the section name, which is My App Settings, followed by dot get, and then the type of the class that you want to map it to. And now app settings should come back as a my app settings class object where we can inspect the values. All right, I'm going to go in here, take a look at one of these. And in fact, there you can see favorite color purple, maximum number of users 1000. So that gets you uh, configuration and dependency injection in all levels of Blazor. You can do it in Blazor Server, you can do it on the server side of a Blazor WASM app, and on the client side of a Blazor WASM app. Knock yourselves out. Back to you in the studio, Carl. And that, my friends, is all she wrote in the app settings JSON file of this episode. Well, hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today, and this is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train.